The Grundy Art Gallery is Blackpool's art gallery. It's been here for over 100 years. It was founded on a bequest by two brothers, the Grundys, and they donated a body of, of artwork uh, and a sum of money to establish a new art gallery for the town. And we're now a gallery that has a permanent collection, but we also work with contemporary artists showing work that's being made now. And what this exhibition is about is in a sense, it's a kind of meeting of these two things. So uh, we've worked with the artist Ben Kane, uh, with an independent curator, Rose de Jeune, to put this exhibition together. My background is in like commissioning artists, so working with artists to make new projects. Um, and about a year and a half ago, I started to become more and more interested in the question about what happens after you've commissioned an artist. So rather than just always making new work with them, thinking about the spaces and the places that art ends up being. So I started to um, approach different types of collections and different artists to think about how we might work together to make new work but with that collection in mind as we were making it and the idea that maybe that would end up back in the collection. When Rose approached us we kind of jumped to the chance because uh, not only did we want to work with her but we also were really interested in the work of, of Ben Kane as well and we absolutely wanted to do something with a collection that involved um, a contemporary artist. Ben and I have spent the last maybe year coming up to Blackpool and talking more with Richard um, and thinking about what that commission might be and how that might respond to the collection. Gradually I began to sort of think that it might be nice to, to think about involving the collection in the gallery in a way that it perhaps hadn't been shown or before. One way to sort of activate this collection, I thought, would be to pull things out of the paintings. Ben has taken 16 paintings from the collection and has brought out different items from those works. So it could be a glass necklace or it could be uh, a pot um, and has worked with locally based artists and craftspeople to have them remade. It was really exciting how Ben immediately kind of started thinking about how to bring in other local craftspeople and other local makers and that that would be something that was also about how they can be part of that collection. The object that was being remade would have to be a one-to-one -one scale so they'd have to, whoever was making for example a wheelbarrow would have to make that wheelbarrow to the exact size that they think it would be if it were to exist in the world. They were also asked to finish everything, all the objects, with very, very light tones. The title of the exhibition is Companions, which comes from the title of one of the paintings that we are including in the exhibition, painted by one of the Grundy brothers, um, Cuthbert. The remade painting, the new version, has taken out the dog and the person, so there's only a stick in, in the foreground, so it sort of makes this stick very primary. What you have in the gallery downstairs now is three different rooms that are all one piece of work, and they sort of need one another in order to function. You'll see in the first gallery, there's various sort of classical tropes of art history that are being displayed. And this is something that the artist has also wanted to highlight and bring out through texts that have been essentially photocopied from a page from an art history textbook to give a kind of further context to this exhibition. And they function almost like footnotes. These boards also serve as a sort of framing device for the rest of the show. They're flat, they're 2D, but they are, you know, it's an image of, of something which is an object. So it already starts to sort of play with the idea of a, an interplay uh, between 2D and, and 3D, which is something that goes on in the rest of the show. The first room is all, all very, you know, dark things in a dark space. And then you look through into the next space and it's all very bright and it's very lightly coloured, very pale colours. The platform has a sort of coating of plaster on it. Uh, to me, is, is a little like the idea of a very messy studio floor. And then behind all of these things on this big platform is a large silk curtain, which is an image of a workshop. And you can just about make that out, but only from certain angles. Sort of things fading into one another, things fading in and out of one another. Sort of paleness, I was sort of also thinking, in, thinking about in relation to the idea of a sort of ghost object. Something which has a sort of ethereal, temporal quality, something which is to do with the idea of it not really quite being there, which is something that you have, I suppose, when you're looking at an object in a painting, there's this sort of, you know, thinking about that object as being there but not being there, you know, it sort of exists 
in a 2D plane, but it also exists in a sort of mental space. So the objects that I've made exist in this sort of strange space, I think, which is somewhere between something imagined and something actual. And finally, the third room, again, there is a stage. And on that stage, there are lots of paintings um, in trays. And as you walk around it, you have lots of different angles. So it's not really like seeing lots of paintings, but rather it's like seeing a sculpture. And it's also a little bit like seeing a single painting. When you look at this stage with all of these images on it, you see lots of different images simultaneously. A policy, as I understand it, um, for a while was that anything that was donated would have to be drawn into the collection. I think with, with this, there's a sort of wonderful sense of democracy and equality. You've got a small drawing of Paul Daniels, you know, next to a Millet. So there's something that runs through this whole show that connects to that idea of um, elements in a collection in some way being imposters, not belonging, and yet nevertheless still being there. So I think it really offers a different way of engaging with the collection um, and of thinking about that kind of idea of whether or not you're an audience or whether or not you're a maker. And one of the things that is not part of the exhibition but has come out of that conversation is a third element which is a still life workshop um, which I guess is about offering precisely that point of people coming to the gallery being able to draw inspiration from the exhibition to make their own work for that to go into that space for other people then to see that work and to respond to that so there's that whole idea of making and remaking and making and remaking going the whole way through not just what Ben has been doing with collection but the way in which the audience can come and engage with the collection. There is something exciting about first of all arranging the paintings from the collection in a totally new way on a plinth, taking them off the wall, putting them on this work surface in the middle of the space, exhibiting these essentially two-dimensional works as 3D sculpture. That's quite a fascinating thing and I had none of us had any idea about how that was going to look. Uh, so personally this was something that was, was very exciting to review, to reimagine, to see the collection simply exhibited in a different way.